Huh? Alright, I've been busy trying to catch up with all the stuff from the new pack and making videos on that, but well prior to all that I did I did hit master rank with a pretty decent record with Centurion. Pure, pure Centurion. So this is probably as streamlined and as basic of a Centurion build as you'll see. I'm running basically pure Centurion. I'm not running a secondary engine at all. Instead, I'm opting to run, instead of the place of another engine, I'm running more hand traps. As a lot of people, when they see Centurion, they're like, oh, I, I can make Crimson Dragon and Blazer, I can do Synchro Plays. No. When I see Centurion, you know what I see? I see, holy crap, this deck can run 17 hand traps. No other deck come close, can come close to running this amount of hand traps in 40. And you still get to run the Call by the Graves and the Call of Crossout Designator for the Maxi uh, package as well. Like, all of this non-engine. It's, dude, I'm, I am in heaven, bro. Like, okay, it's okay, it's like, for, for like, in all seriousness, uh, if you want to run a secondary engine with Centurion, which uh, is completely fine and uh, gives you uh, more extension and it's honestly might be more enjoyable for you if you like call me more, uh, these are the best engines that I recommend to pair with the Centurion engine. So you have uh, the Resonator engine and uh, so Resonator with Crimson Gaia is essentially a discard engine. Uh, when uh, uh, Crimson Gaia and Resonator, they give you free discard fodder since like when uh, Risen Resonator is sent to the grave, you can add basically Crimson Gaia and then Crimson Gaia will add another copy of Risen Resonator. So it makes your discard for stand-ups and turn on free. And this is a level 2 tuner. So level 2 tuner with your level 8 uh, bodies works very well because that lets you make a Baron on your turn. And that's very nice. Uh, another engine... Stardust, if you really want to go really combo combo, the entire Stardust Synchron engine uh, works well. Stardust Synchron is a level 4 tuner, so that matches very well with your level 8 non-tuners. Then you can go into multiple Blazars and like just go full combo. It's like you're just playing Synchron with, with like a Centura engine. There's that, and then uh, there's Horus, which Horus is a, you know, most generic level 8 engine in the game. So that's, uh, that's that. And then... Uh, you can run a higher bishop count. You see, I'm running. I'm only running two bishops, but if you can run a Lubelian as well with a regain. So regain works really well in this deck because it's, it's all light and dark. And uh, so Lubelian is also a level eight non-tuner. So you know, uh, more fodder for your synchros and all that stuff. I'm personally, instead of running any of those, I'm just running more hand traps because those these cards, although they're nice, they're nice extenders and stuff like that. These aren't. Number one, they're not starters. They don't really uh, drawing these without drawing your Centurion cards. They these don't really uh, get you into your engine. And obviously, if you're just playing with pure Horus cards without Centurion cards, if you're just playing pure Bistio without or Vision Resonator without your uh, Centurion engine going, then the, you can't really. Hey, you're probably not winning those games anyways. But also, uh. In my opinion, hand traps are the best way a deck like Centurion is able to go second, in my opinion, because this deck is uh, not the strongest playing into boards. Uh, especially since, like, your plays are really telegraphed and, like, the choke points are very easy to identify. It honestly doesn't even matter. Like, half the time, it, your opponent could hit the wrong thing and it'll still be enough to stop you going second with just with hard removal. And if they have non destruction removal for your stamp Centurion, then that's, like, even worse. So. I'm trying to limit my opponent's boards as much as possible, and to, and obviously to do that you're running 17 uh, hand traps to, to do so. And uh, like the, the counter argument would be that uh, you, you're what about your ceiling going first? Because if you're if you're just running hand, if you're just playing pure centurion, your end board is kind of mid, right? Like these, uh, if you combine centurion with any of these engines, your end board is like very comprehensive, very strong, right? And then uh, you know you actually have a real quote unquote real end board with uh, a lot more disruptions at the same time i've been playing with this deck and i'm telling you when i resolve my combo even as simple as a one card centurion combo that everyone knows that uh, that literally just ends on phalanx plus 
Blazar, which is a Banish plus a Omni Negate. Even when all I do is that, I win the majority of my games going first when I resolve my combo. Even just the, just something as innocuous as that. Because uh, instead of running more engine pieces, uh, the rest of my hand is just non-engine. Yeah, I can have two to three, uh, most likely around like two on average other hand traps in my hand on top of uh, the board, which is uh, Blazar plus Phalanx. That's like up to four disruptions if you count the hand traps. But also, Centurion has very good follow-up because uh, you're sending Primera back. Primera gets you a surge on your opponent's turn. The Phalanx is in form of follow-up if you're the Synchro that you're going to uh, die is turn one. Blazar itself, Blazar is underrated as a form of follow-up because it's not just an Omni Negate. It's an Omni Negate that banishes itself, which means after it negates something, it flees, and then then uh, the Probably with a lot of other Omni Negates, such as uh, like Baron, is uh, if they bait out the Omni Negate of Baron and then play through it, they can just get rid of the Baron later. But if the Blazar negates something, it flees, and then your opponent, it's really hard for your opponent to actually interact with uh, the Blazar after it negates something. Like they can't stop it from coming back. It's really hard to do that. It doesn't, it doesn't special summon back, it just comes back. So, like, you know, even against stun, you know, if they just summon a fossil diner after the you negate something with Blazar, that doesn't work. Blazar still comes back. Which means that this Bla the Blazar Dragon will just constantly negate one of your opponent's cards and then just, just come back repeatedly and then they can't get rid of it. So, like, that that in itself is like a pretty, like, actual real form of fall up, anyways. And then if you combine it with actual non engine, like, I, my, my point is that the seal, the low ceiling of the Centurion deck with just uh, the this, this, this small Centurion engine and like no secondary engine, it's fine. It hasn't been a problem with me. I've won um, plenty, I've won the majority of my games uh, when I can play it, when I resolve my combo going first, even as underwhelming as the end board might seem on the surface. Also, uh, another thing is that this deck is actually pretty okay at playing through hand traps and it doesn't really lose to any one. Uh, hard lose to any one single card. Uh, you know, like, uh, this deck actually uh, plays decently well into Shifter, believe it or not, because Auxilla can place uh, your Centurion monsters from the Banish zone, so even if your uh, Premier gets banished, you can just actually place it back with the Auxilla anyways, and then uh, if you have stand-up, you can still single your opponent's turn. Obviously, you can't use stand-up, so, like, stand-up has to send to the grave, so you can't use stand up to place a card. So you do need like a two card combo to play through a shifter, which is, I mean, fine because most decks can't play through a sh play through a shifter, even if they have like a four card combo because their engine relies so much on the grave. But uh, yeah, if you have like something like an emblem of oath or uh, like another way to place uh, another interior monster in your back row, and then you can still make the auxilla, and then the auxilla gets your premier back from the banished anyways. You can actually play through a shifter decently well that way. Uh, you know, single, uh, single target hand traps like Ash or Imperm or Valor stuff like that. You can actually uh, play through them with uh, just drawing more copies of Engine, right? If you open with one of your normal summons, drawing any of your spells like Stand Up or Emblem of Oath or you know even Phalanx or even Bonfire, uh, occasionally, lets you uh, lets you play through any hand trap that way. Likewise, if you start with Stand Up or uh, or Emblem of Oath. And uh, they hit your like your Primera, then you can simply uh, if you have another copy of Emblem of Oath, you can just set whatever you're, you're going to add with Primera in the first place, or you could you know bond if they, if they negate your Primera and you were trying to get Trudea, Bonfire as the Trudea uh, as well. Like you shouldn't you shouldn't be losing the the hand traps a, a lot of the time with uh, this deck. It, it's not like uh, it's it's not like the decks that. Uh, their normal summon is so important that when you norm when you negate the normal summon, their turn ends. Like sometimes that will happen, but usually it won't. And also, even Maxi. So Maxi does hurt, but only if your opponent uses it correctly, which nobody on Master Duel does. But like the best way to actually use Maxi, believe it or not, is the to Maxi on your turn, not the Maxi the Centurion player on their turn. Because uh, if you Maxi on my turn and I open like literally any two card combo or like any two engine cards, I can end on two interruptions by only giving you one maxi draw. Like if, if you maxi 
my Trudea to summon itself after I already have a Primera, then uh, I can search a Phalanx instead and then end on like uh, Phalanx plus uh, uh, Stanaps and Charion with um, something in the like a Trudea in the spell and trap. So now I can I can quick synchro into a Lagashia, which is like a, a pop on your turn. Plus I have a Phalanx as well as a Banish. And all I really did was special summon one, so you only drew once, and that's like two interruptions right there. You know, if you open like Tru uh, Trudea plus Ove, or like Stand Up plus Trudea, or Primera plus Stand Up, like any two card combination of these. Basically, if I don't have to make Auxilla to search the Phalanx, I can end on the the, the two interruptions already without uh, special summoning more than once. Oh yeah, Maxi, if you if you have the discipline. See if you can maxi on your turn instead of maxing the uh, maxing the Centurion, Centurion player on their turn. It's a lot more. It can often be more impactful. Also, um, worst case scenario, if you maxi me, I can also make Plan B with Guska pass, which you know if you don't have an infirm, is is still hard for a lot of decks to out, especially considering I'm running 17 hand traps on top of uh, that. So. Oh yeah, we'll briefly go over the deck list because most of this is standard, like 3 Primera, 3 Trudea, 3 Stand Up, 3 Emblema of uh, 1 Phalanx. I hope they shouldn't have to explain any of those, I think those are all mostly self-explanatory. You have uh, 2 Bonfire, uh, mainly because it, it's just more starters, because without, if you're just running pure Centurion and you're just uh, running uh, the standard package, you only have 12 starters, which it's it's okay, but I mean by two to twenty twenty four standards, it's really it's it's actually twelve stars is actually quite low. Even Snake Eyes with all of their hits, you know, their one Ash or two Bonfire or one Wanted, even pure Snake Eyes has more starters than than twelve. So because that we're running two Bonfire just to increase the starter count to boost boost it up to fourteen because true Bonfire adds today and today is a one card combo, and that gives you like a ninety percent chance to open a starter in a in a five card hand, which is about where you what you want to be for a deck uh, mid range deck that runs this many hand traps, and also bonfire has a secondary uh, target where if you already do open your combo, you can uh, search uh, Agnimal candle. This is basically just poplar as a level four tuner. It doesn't get a surge effect, but I mean you you you're not you're just running it as a free special summonable level four tuner off of bonfire. And if you open if you open bonfire plus any one card combo. You can do a line that ends you on double blazer, if you don't respect nib. Which you know, if if you want to play, if you want to respect nib, obviously you you, know, you don't have to do that line. But if you don't care about Nibiru, because this is master do after all, and it's not too common, then uh, you can do a line to get you an extra interruption with uh, the second blazer. Which I will show you the ways to do that in the, uh, in in the replays. And then one of uh, each of the level eights, Gargoyle plus MF Gargoyle. You go. You, this is your standard turn one. You you uh, get this uh, in all of your combos pretty much. And then MF uh, randomly. It doesn't come up as often, but randomly you will have to sometimes search this with Primera if you're like low on uh, monsters on board for some reason. Like your opponent interrupt you weirdly, or like there's just weird game states where having an MF comes up, you know, sometimes you lead with Trudea and you have like Oath and then uh, your Trudea gets impermed and then later on you'll have to actually get MF on your opponent's turn to put the tr so you can uh, put the tr Trudea back into your spell trap zone so you actually have another form of follow up while still maintaining the level 8 uh, body since you obviously the Trudea stayed on the field because it got negated so you didn't have that but it's yeah this it this does come up so uh, some people were talking about like I, this isn't as necessary. I would still uh, run this. Like I, I, I think I think you still need to run the MF. Uh, wake up and turn on probably don't need to run. So this is just the, the secondary search target. If you are already if you don't need to search Phalanx, for example, like if you're going second or you already hired the Phalanx, then like this is a another search target. You can either run this or Centurion Bonds. Honestly, I, I think I don't think either of these cards are that good. Cause Wake Up Centurion gets you a level four or level eight non-tuner, but you're not lacking on non-tuner bodies. If, if you're anything, you're lacking on tuners. So a lot of the times you can't even make use of the extra body that this would get you. And then the where effect the foolish, I'm gonna be honest, the 
the main benefit of its effect to foolish is so that you banish the card so that you can make chaos archfiend live it it, it the, there isn't actually a lot of good things you can dump like there's phalanx but phalanx you would rather add it to your hand because it because you would rather use it as an interruption on field than to use it, its grid and grave effect first. And then after that, there isn't really any beneficial grave effects in this deck. You know, I'm not running some true awakening because this actually hampers your ability to combo because you have to get rid of one of your monsters in your spell trap. And oftentimes you need all the monsters in your spell and trap zone to actually be able to synchro summon on your opponent's turn withstand them in the first place. So like by using a true awakening, you're actually like hampering your own engine either that or you're waiting so long until after you're already done all your plays and if, if you like went through blazar and you summoned things on, on your opponent's turn like do you do you really need an on the gate like i feel like just having the phalanx would be good enough already at that point and yeah centurion bonds is the other one you can run in place of wake up centurion I I haven't tested this as much, but it's fine. It, it's also like it's not a starter. It doesn't let you play the game. It doesn't really do much by itself either. But it basically fulfills like a similar purpose with Wake Up Centurion, and it like can it can recur. Like Wake Up Centurion saves, like like it saves one of your bodies. You know, like you don't have to use Gargoyle to. Uh, send one of your Centurion cards to get a body, you can just get the wake up instead. And likewise, Harry Bonds, it's, if you uh, have to use your like your Gargoyle to send one of your Centurion cards to the grave to special summon Gargoyle, then, you know, Bonds can re extra, like, recur back your Centurion monsters that you send. It, these cards aren't really... Honestly, you could probably get away with not running a secondary search target, a spell trap search in this slot, and you can just, like, play another hand trap if you if you want that. Neither Bond nor Wake Up are really crucial and haven't really come up too much in the uh, games I play with this deck. And uh, as for hand traps, I mean the hand traps are pretty self-explanatory except uh, Bistios, uh, a note on Bistios, these are actually really good. They synergize very well because uh, you have Primera which is a level 4 life tuner. So even if you get disrupted, if you have a Bistio, uh, Primera plus bank plus either Bistial can get you a Baron at the very least, if not a uh, light dark chaos angel, which is also you know uh, uh, pretty decent. And uh, this deck can struggle to put up damage going second, so just having hand traps like these or Nibiru that uh, put bodies in the field of large attack, so that to help push through damage also uh, comes up with this deck. And uh, the extra deck. Uh, only you really only use like maybe five to six cards in this extra deck. I'm gonna be honest. Like you use your Blazars, uh, and you use your Crimson Dragon and your like Ashia and Auxilla. I'm gonna be honest. I've never used two Auxilla in a single game. Like, you could probably get away with just running one Lagasha and one Auxilla. It, it is optimal to run two Auxilla and two Lagasha just because really the other cards in your extra don't actually even matter anyway. So you might as well just have extra copies of these just in case. But I've never really needed the second copy of either of these in the games I played either. So, you know, if you're really, if you're really like, uh, strapped for UR CP, then these aren't the highest priority uh, to craft in the deck. Although they probably should still be in your deck uh, eventually. And then you know Baron because you're running Bistios, you got to run Baron, and you also got to run Chaos Angel. Uh, no, uh, note, if you're running Bishos, you don't have to, when you, you synchro on your opponent's turn with stand-up, you don't have to synchro into a level 12. You don't have to go into Crimson Dragon or one of your Centurions. So you can actually you, uh, sync, quick synchro with a Bistio instead, and then go into a level 10. So you can go into like a Baron de Fleur, or what comes up more often is going into Chaos Angel on your opponent's turn to get banish your opponent's card. Uh, yeah, I rarely summon Chaos Angel on my turn. I, I summon it way more on my opponent's turn than on my turn, so yeah. And then, uh, you know, Excel starters is for the Gamma and Chaos Archfiend. Uh, so Chaos Archfiend is basically a way for this deck to push damage going second. Um, uh, so if this card, if any card gets banished, this card gains two, 2k attack and it can attack all your opponent's monsters once. And when they destroy them by battle, it banishes them. So obviously that's, uh, that's pretty nice. It's very, you can always trigger Chaos Archfiend's effect, uh, uh, to gain 2k because you can. This is where Wake Up Centurion, honestly, 
like, like I said, this is where the Wake Up Centurion comes up the most. You can always get Wake Up Centurion, and then you can always just banish Wake Up Centurion from your grave. And just by doing that, you, give, you get yourself a 4500 Chaos Archfiend. So, yeah, I tried to be cute, and I also uh, put in a Penta stack. Uh, this just shows how little the extra deck matters after a certain point. I've never did, uh, done Penta stack plus Archaeos Archfiend. Uh, I don't think that's real. I just did it for the memes. And, uh, you know, if one of these days I could get like a clip of uh, that and like post it on my. and post it as a community post, you know, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll know where, where this came from. But yeah, also if this leaves the field by your opponent's card, so by battle card effect, regardless, you can summon a Chaos Angel from your extra deck. And because Chaos Angel triggers on special summon, you get to banish a card too. So that that's really nice. This is like the uh, decent level 8. When Idig Master uh, pack bit comes out, next pack, um, I'm not going to take out Chaos Archfiend for that. I'm just going to probably take out something else. Like maybe maybe a, a probably the Pentastag for the the pack bit when that comes out. And Baguska, Plan B, Typhon... It's Typhon, uh, SP is SP, and Artemis. So Artemis is just a Link 1 level 4 lower spellcaster, which means you can turn Primera into Artemis. That way you can give your SP a banish on your turn as well. Not the most important because you can also get yourself a SP banish by linking off one of your like ex your single monsters like your Auxilla, but uh, yeah, sometimes in weird game states, Artemis with uh, Primera to give your SP a banish does come up. So yeah, let's watch some gameplay of this deck in action. So this is going to be an example of how you do the uh, double Blazar combo, two card combo when you open any starter plus Bonfire. So obviously you're gonna start with Premier, and this this is the standard line. You know you, you get your your stand up, and you, the the first four summons that you do for this are the exact same as your normal one card combo. So yeah, Tradea comes out, put back the guard, put the gargoyle, scale the gargoyle, make us auxilla, auxilla, gargoyle, add itself back, and then uh, auxilla add phalanx and. If you just have the one card combo, this is what, this is where it ends. If you want to uh, do the double Blazar play with the Bonfire, now you would add Bonfire, and obviously this plays into Nibiru. So if you don't care about playing into Nibiru, you would do this. If you if you respect Nibiru, you obviously wouldn't do this. But we're on Master Duel, so you know, probably probably not not needed to respect Niv as much. Thanks, thank you, DK. But yeah, add uh, Agnable Candle, your special Agnable Candle, and then uh, special. Gargoyle and then send the Trudea. So this is the this is the greedy line. This is the line where you search Phalanx. There's a, another line where uh, instead of searching Phalanx, you just search Wake Up Centurion instead. And then instead of using the Gargoyle, you send you use the Wake Up to uh, synchro with the Agnimo Candle. That way you still have the Trudea on the on the field. So it uh, you it would be the exact same combo as normal combo except you just have an extra laser on the field at the end of it if you uh, want to search phalanx with the auxilla then you have to use gargoyle as an extender and gargoyle sends trudea to the grave that's part of your combo so you you have one less monster in your back row so i'll, I'll show you how to adjust your combo with or, or what you need to do to still end on a double blazer that way and crimson dragon comes out the first blazer you make it on your turn which is nice then you set these and then re you reset uh primera and then on your opponent's turn, first action, you, you Primera, and then you Primera has to search uh, MF. Okay, so right now you can't make anything because your levels are 12, 4, 12. And obviously there's no such thing as a level 16 Synchro. So you're actually going to have to use MF effect to put your Auxilla back in the Spell Trap Zone. And then you have a 4 and 8. And then these two can go into your, your Crimson Dragon again. And then Crimson Dragon will target the Blazar and then... Uh, comes out the second place are. So, yeah, that's basically the this uh, setup. If you want the fa phalanx, now this is a, a bit riskier because it, it doesn't give you any follow up besides the blazars themselves. Because you put the auxilla in the spell trap zone, you don't have a, you won't be getting any of these centurion monsters back in your spell trap zone because your auxilla isn't going to be on the field anymore, and then you don't really have a guaranteed follow up for centurion play for the next turn. 
At the same time, you do get a double Omni Negate plus a Centurion Phalanx. And the Blazers themselves are basically follow up because your opponent can't really get rid of them. If they activate cards, you just negate them with Blazar and then they banish themselves. And your opponent can't really interact with them. Like, they're not going to get rid of the Blazars after they negate something. So they're just going to come back to the end phase after negating and then keep doing this. So if you have like double Blazar, you can often just win the game off of having two Blazars anyway, so without any more Centurion plays. And of note, this also plays around Super Poly, because at the entire point of your combo, you had a Dark and a Wind, and then a Dark, a Light, and a Wind, and then you had an Earth, a Light, and a Wind, and then you have a Light and a Wind with the Crimson Dragon, and then you finally have Double Blazar Dragon, and uh, Garuda needs two monsters with different names to fuse. So this also isn't super, Double Blazar is also not super polyable. So this entire thing, you are playing around super poly, funnily enough. <laughs> you know, it, it's just as a bonus, I guess. And yeah, obviously if you search the wake up instead of the, the phalanx, then you would have your follow up. You would have like uh, for the premiere search and then you would still have the auxilla on the field to set to place your other uh, centurions back in their spell trap zone too. So instead of the, if you don't want the phalanx interruption, the wake up gets guarantees you more follow up. Funnily enough, that does play into uh, super poly because then you're summoning Tradea, then you would have two darks on the field. But you, you know, it's funny how the, the more conservative play plays into more like board breakers. But you know, yeah, in, in, enough rally that like that that's basically the gist. That's that's the most complicated combo you'll need to know when playing pure centurion. So yeah, that that's how you. Uh, do it and yeah, obviously double Blazar plus Phalanx plus all your other non engine. That's probably you're probably gonna win that game regardless. So, so here's a game where uh, this is uh, you know, sometimes you, you draw a hand like this because you are running 17 hand traps. So, we only opened one starter and this die this loses to one hand trap, but at the same time, my opponent's not doing doing anything either because uh, of, of all of this and. They lead off with uh, Nightmare Throne, because of course they would. Why wouldn't the UBL player open Nightmare Throne and then add Samsara Lotus? And there's an argument to be made that I should just wait and get this maxi off, because I currently don't have a way to play. So instead of like firing out this Veiler, because I can Veiler this, and I'm hoping that they have other w ways to extend. And then they have a Nightmare Pain, which I Ash. Don't know if Ashing the Nightmare Pain was correct. Because I maybe I should have just let them try the special summon and then get draws out this maxi. Because even though this stops their turn, right? I don't have any follow up, so I draw into a gamma. More on that later. But uh, now I have to actually do something without an actual starter. So I link off into Artemis. This is where it comes up. Normal summon deck builder, and this, then this gets maxi. Which I, I'm fine getting maxi for one draw. It, it's fine. Make SP target the nightmare pain. And they in perm. I could chain to banish the lotus, but then I have to deal with the lotus again. So I, I'm like, you know what? I'll just eat the in perm and attack over the lotus. For Sixteen, and then pray that they don't actually have a dark monster. I I know Cocopia, but yeah, uh, their turn they draw. They use one for one to pitch the U bell, so they did have a dark monster. But fortunately, they did play into a max E, so thank fucking god. Bro, if this maxi didn't resolve, I was completely cooked. They get the Samsara Lotus and then they just put two back for Phantom and then they, they just pass on this. So, you go Phantom, Ubel, attack for 16 and then my turn. Uh, we draw the candle again. <laughs> you, you, you'll, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see this, this come up later, but... Uh, Phantom of Ubel plus Samsara Lotus is also a, uh, a monster negate too, so they technically have double monster uh, negates. Uh, but, so my turn, I'm gonna activate Primera, and then I'm gonna, they're gonna choose, uh, Phantom Ubel. Now their Samsara Lotus is not live anymore, they, I think they should have used this first as a monster negate, because now that the Phantom Ubel is off the field, they don't, uh, have a, uh, Ubel monster for the Samsara Ubel Lotus negate. And, uh, this is the play... <laughs> This is the, I thought about this for like a, a hot second. I'm like, what do I have to do with this play? Because I if I, because I have two normal summons, and they both get stopped by Phantom Yubo. So what instead I opt to do is I use SP Little Knight to banish my own Primera. That way the Phantom Yubo effect triggers, sending Spirit Yubo. And when Spirit Yubo is sent, now my field is clear, 
and I use Gamma to negate the U Bell. So you so they no longer get another U Bell monster. So their Sandstar U Lotus negate is still not live, and we can negate it. Their uh, other method of getting a Yubel monster, and I got this Gamma out of my hand. So, yeah, and then we go into Excel Synchron Stardust into Baron. You know, uh, I don't have, and I didn't resolve any engine in this game. But you know what? This is a deck with 17 hand traps, so sometimes you get carried by your non engine. And we go Baron attack over the Sandstar D Lotus, then pop the Nightmare Pain, and then end phase my SP and my. Primera comes back. I love doing that with SP, by the way. I, I love clearing my own field to just to uh, make my Gamma alive. I always try to see if there's a good opportunity to uh, to do so. Because uh, Gamma is the, one of the strongest forms of interruption still. Much stronger than an SP Little Knight, for example. And SP Little Knight guarantees follow-up because it banishes my own monsters for the end phase. And it guarantees they live. So they're obviously going to make a second fan of Yubel, because why... Uh, cause, you know, this card's balanced, and then they normal summon Dark Beckoning Beast. So I'm like, I SP Little Knight banishing the Dark Beckoning Beast. I'm trying to half negate a Phantom Yugal, but I'm like, if they don't have another starter, then this Beckoning Beast doesn't do anything because they currently have zero Fiend monsters in Grave that they can revive with uh, uh, Spirit Gates. So if you banish this, then they still can't activate Spirit Gates with this card to, to revive anything. And they let that go, which means that they have another engine piece. So they're going to activate opening the Spirit Gates to add another Dark Beckoning Beast. And then they have the second Nightmare Pain. You know, they, they always just have another Nightmare Pain anyways. So now they get to pop the Dark Beckoning Beast. Now the Dark Beckoning Beast is in the grave, they can use Spirit Gates to discard the, U, the Spirit of U-Bell and Spiral Summon back to U-Bell. And now they have their combo again. And meanwhile, this Baron can't do anything because it's checked by Fan of U-Bell. So at this point, I don't do I do not want to use my Baron. If I use my Baron and trigger the Fan of U-Bell, they get another uh, U-Bell monster out. And uh, they have two level 10s, and that means they can kill me with Gustav Mac, which some people will still run, or Liebe. So I have to just not do anything of, with Baron, and let them keep the fan of Yuba on the field, because it's a level 9, and a, because it's a level 9, they can't <laughs> make make the rank 10 training seeds. So they can attack for 6k, but that's it, leaving me at 400, active the second Nightmare Pain. And here they go into SP for some reason. Not quite sure why, but SP now... Targets the Baron, and I use Baron in the gate, and they're gonna save their SP by banishing my Primera, so... They, yeah. After all that resolves, the SP gets negated, but it still comes back because it used its second effect to dodge, and they make another fan of u -Bell. And now they get that stuff back, and I get the Baron back, and I draw a Call by the Grave. Okay, they, simplifies things a lot. Don't have to think about anything. Literally just bait out the fan of u -Bell and it's over. That, uh, that's the that's the one thing about U Belt. It's it's kind of weak to call by the grave. That that's the one thing. If you get the call by the grave on the fan of U Belt, it's pretty devastating. And now they're going to SP Little Knight the Baron. I'm like fine, because I do have another normal monster. I have another. Uh, I have six twelve thirty two hundred on the field right now. Uh, you know what that means, right? At Agnimo Candle for game. Boom. M multiple. But if I had a nickel for every time my Agnimo Candle attacked the game, I'd have two nickels. Which is not a lot, but it's amazing that that happened fucking twice. So, this is an unfortunate uh, combination of uh, Centurion cards. We opened three pieces of engine, unfortunately, none of them are the good spell traps. Uh, wake Up is not really a, an extender, so we, did, we didn't open... What, what's it called? The Emblem of Oath or the Field Spell. So unfortunately, this does this cannot really play through a hand trap. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get impermed and we're we're gonna pass. Fortunately, we do have two hand traps of our own. You know, as long as Max she resolves Copium, we'll be okay, right? So they're gonna bonfire and I, I don't I don't want to ash bonfire because uh, I want to make them commit the normal summon and I don't want to play into Gamma. So I'm I'm trying to live here, okay. I'm I'm, I'm trying to survive. So I'm gonna ash the 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 ash, uh, yeah. And our opponent's gonna activate Fire King Sanctuary, get the Fire King Island, and then send the Sanctuary for Die Balstar, get the original sinful spoils. It's uh unfortunate, but at the very least, this Max Seed does resolve. So they do get the Ponyx, and Ponyx will get the Skyburn. And now they're gonna use the Fire King Island to pop the Alcanics in hand, get the Karunuks, and they they don't 
they don't trigger on Canix because it does summon in defense, so it doesn't actually help them both case. So I guess they, they want to give me less draw, so I guess that is smart there. And then I'm going to use Garunix, uh, send Kirin, Kirin stun back all Canix, and then pop my card. And then this is still not enough for games. Now they're going to use Ash, uh, sending all Canix, summoning Flamber. They're at at 7400 and now because i i've messed up my toggles they know i have an imperm now they're gonna use flamebirds target my maxi at which point i'm going to imperm target the flamebird so that they can't place my maxi so that any so that if i draw into any more imperms my imperms will still be live they decide to continue going uh they don't though they uh they uh coward out of the maxi challenge and leave me at 600 hp which is uh i feel like you, you really should just go for the kill I'm on the honest, like leaving me at 600 after you already gave me three draws off max E is not does not feel good, and you'll you'll soon see why. So they have a Skyburn set. Now I'm gonna summon Primera, Primera get the stand up Centurion, activate stand up. I will pitch the Trudea, and then they're going to Skyburn, and again nobody reads. Yu-Gi-Oh players don't read. Literally first line of text. Cannot be destroyed by your opponent's uh, cards while you control a Cheria monster card, and um, no, they, they still they're, they're going to Skyburn pop this anyways. Ah, I I guess, and yeah, I get the Trudea anyways. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess they wanted to pop their cards anyway, so it didn't really matter. But uh, it, it's funny how like this thing never I've never my opponent has never popped this because uh, it, of the protection effect. And now you summon out MF, and then I get. The token, and then I use bonfire, add a Agnum candle. I'm like, I'm trying to find a way to kill, to kill my opponent. Unfortunately, um, because they nuked my tuner, my one way to kill them through a flamberge was a uh, this card, Chaos Archfiend, because it banishes monsters and destroys with battle. But I don't have a tuner. I don't have a light tuner access anymore, so I actually can't kill through the flamberg and I don't want to actually kill the flamberg and then they get to revive and they get two searches so this is this is an awkward play we're gonna su special auxiliary with these two and then you know get the phalanx I'm not gonna kill them I'm just gonna get this as an interruption and then we're gonna turn these two into SP Little Knight and SP Little Knight I'm gonna banish the Fire King Island it's gonna trigger the Fire King Island and then I'm gonna chain the SP to the Fire King Island so to banish the flamberg so that the flamberg doesn't die so that way they don't get the, the summon back. And now I'm, I lead them on like essentially Flamberge, two cards, plus this pawn is coming back. But I do have a Valor and I do have a uh, Phalanx. And I have an XP Little Knight as well. And on the on the, the pawn X, I'm just going to trigger the XP Little Knight as well, banishing the Flamberge so they can't do anything of it. Again, so I don't, they don't get any revival, they don't get any recursion. It's just the pawn X in a dream. And they're going to uh, original Sinless Wood, put back the Ash, and add a Poplar. And they're gonna special the poplar, but like they don't have another search target because they don't run subversion. And they're gonna normal summon Ponix. They only run run Fire King Island. This is why I run two Fire King Island because the first one gets allergic quite frequently. And uh, if they had the second Fire King Island, I was gonna Valor that like uh, with the quickness anyway, so they don't have a Link Rebo engrave. But they they didn't have it anyways. So they actually don't have the play for the Fire King. Uh, so I don't know how they're gonna trigger their Fire King stuff anymore. I'm gonna summon back to Tr Trudea. They try to enter battle phase because like, I'm at 600, so I do Trudea summon it back just as a chump blocker. Then they're gonna summon Hita, and you know, get back Poplar doesn't really matter. And then they're gonna Hita target the target my Agnimbo Candle. When the last, last time someone targeted Agnimbo Candle with a Hita? Anyways, uh, Phalanx get rid of that, and uh, yeah, end phase SP and Flamberge comes back. Then my MF comes back. Well, except they get Bell. Who the who the fuck is running Bell this? This format, uh, I, I guess it works on the M. Not not that it really matters because like this is not a trigger effect, so I can just use this on my. And yeah, they they realize that they can't actually uh, do anything, and I finally have. To, I was gonna kill them in Chaos Archfiend this time, so yeah. So here's a game where we're going second, and we only won with one hand trap, which is a biz deal. Which obviously, when you run seventeen, it's not ideal. Unless you're playing exactly against Mathmech, which is, uh, you know, this is the exact hand trap you want. This is probably the best hand trap in the game versus Mathmech. Now, when you only have one Bistio, um, I, you probably shouldn't hit the Sigma. Because, uh, 
if you hit the Sigma and try to deny them like all their entire engine, they they have literally any one extender, it, they play through this and it makes your one base shield completely useless. So you don't want to do that. You uh, if you have one base shield, you want to hold it until the very end, see what they do. If they uh, if they don't go for cyanide conflict, then you can simply hold the base shield for your turn and then hit the super factor, and then you don't have to worry about the entire super factor thing ever. They don't really have a way to stop unless they like drew bell or something. And yeah, I see our opponent didn't uh, go for the cyanide conflict line, dumping the the micro and then uh, getting heat and all that stuff. So they just just linger 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 rebo and firefall. Now if they did get the do the even if they did do the cyanide conflict line, and they have a heat on the board. You just in the end phase, you would just uh, druid's worm the diameter out of the grave, and then on their turn on your turn, they would have to use their firewall dark fluid on a. Uh, what's it called? The on the uh, dumping another math mech name instead of the cybers to save for him. So then, even though you, the super factor is live, you cut them off of their omni gate off the super factor, and you cut them off of the of the save worm negate. So you still got rid of two interruptions with one bestial. But uh, it's even better when they don't go for the, the sign confine, obviously, as uh, you'll see here. So now I have called by and I have bonfire, and uh, I maybe should have led with bonfire because there's a there's a decent chance they would have negated with the save form. I don't really know, but because I led with Primera, Primera, now they know that I'm on Centurion. So if I reveal Bonfire, they probably wouldn't negate anymore because they're like, oh, this guy's only going to add what Shredea to their hand. That Bonfire doesn't really matter. So yeah, and, and instead uh, I get Valor on the Shredea. So I'm going to call by the Valor and see if they negate this. They usually. Uh, don't negate the called by because they're worried about their super factor resolving. Even though the chance of me having two called by is very slim, so there's you know, uh, save room the called by is usually fine. You, you only really lose the double called by, but uh, it, it's whatever. They let it through, and then they're gonna draw me, and this is <laughs> yeah, nice troll. The troll literally does nothing against, uh, almost nothing against the. Uh, Centurion at this point, if I open, if I hard open uh, primary, because now I add stand, my stand rate just sets to the field, and I can still do all my single plays. I just missed the one search off of my Legacia or my, uh, what's it called, the Auxilla, but I still have my search target anyway, so it, it actually drilled, literally did nothing except turn on my bonfire, which would give me an Agnable, which I don't really need. And of course, now they fire off the Super Actoral, and here, Druid's Worm just eats them alive. They try to Dark, dark Fluid send, uh, Send another math effect name. That's not how it works because super factorial targets, so it still doesn't work. And uh, I, I hit the the diameter out of the grave instead of the sigma. I know it's not common anymore, but a lot of people, uh, some people run two island version. So if you run two island version and you let them provide the diameter, they still end up getting a negate on the burn, even though it doesn't. It's not interrupted. So I, just to be safe, make sure you're not dealing with any more interruptions. You hit the diameter. That way, even if they do have the second island version, all they 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 wouldn't get a negate out of that. So yeah, and then of course the levels match up perfectly where you can go Baron and then Druid's Worm will send the Dark Fluid. They'll call by the Grave, which honestly I feel like they should have maybe just let that go. Because now, uh, uh, yeah, they, they didn't get the Druid's Worm, but I'll just pop the Terra Hertz with the the Baron anyways. And now your, tra your spell trap negates off because you don't control a Link, uh, a Link for higher monsters. Now I get to do my entire combo line, Trudea for... Uh, gargoyle, gargoyle, enter battle phase, uh, enter battle phase. It's not an entire comm line. I don't have the tuner because I use the tuner to make it barren, but it's fine because, again, I hard drew the phalanx, so they just have a lingaribo and a, and a sigma and a dream. And they're going to summon back the sigma, go these two into crystal heart, and I'm not even messing around. <laughs> you just phalanx the crystal heart, and then it's over. They have one card. They literally can't do anything with one card versus the baron. Like, come on now. Well, yeah, that was, a, that was probably a, 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 a longer ex explanation of how to beat Math Mech with a, when you draw a Bistio than is necessary. But but you know what? As a former Math Mech player, just, you know, just just share, sharing the insight on how to always always beat Math Mech when you have a when you have the right hand. <laughs> All right, so here's another game where we're going first, and we open the. The combo plus bonfire, so uninterrupted, we can go for the double blazar play like before. So I'm just gonna, we're gonna skip through this because, um, uh, spoilers, my opponent doesn't have a response for this on my turn. So, yeah, Auxilla, Gargoyle, get the get the trap, and then add K 
candles, special candle. I show Gargoyle sending Tradea going to Crimson into Blazar. Uh, and set to end phase, summon back Primera, and opponent leads with Pot of Desires, and I will negate that with Blazar. So here's something I forgot to mention with this setup is that if your opponent leads off with a card you have to negate with Blazar, then you can't make the second Blazar because then you don't you don't have an extra level 12 single on the field to for Crimson Dragon to tag and target. So instead, uh, you can still make a level 12 single except it just has to be uh, what's it called? It has to be Legacia, uh, Legacia at that point, which is still fine. It's still two interruptions, and you get instead instead of a second Omni Gate, you get the pop of opponent's monster instead and draw a card, which is still usually fine. And yeah, our opponent, um, I'm gonna, they enter battle phase and I'm like, they might have an, at this point, like, I actually can't have, I don't have a response to evenly anymore because I use my Omni Gate, so I just summon the Primera and then add Tradea for follow up and then I'll eat the evenly and banish everything, it's, it's fine because like all of these are like mul two ofs anyways in my deck or multiple, or I have multiple copies of all of these cards left in my deck still, including Auxilla, so I just leave the Phalanx on the field as interruption and they have a Fossil Diamond and they have a Moon Mirror Shield. And they have a set one. So Blazer comes back and this is the only This is the only out they had. So I have Phalanx to manage the Fossil Dina and then they have Solemn Dungeon. That that's the they had to have an out to the Phalanx. They needed like a fucking Solemn card or some Iron Thunder or some shit to to stop me from managing the Fossil Dina. So now we're in a stalemate, because now I can't run over the Fossil Dina because they have Moon Mirror Shield. So I'm gonna Trudea set Primera and and then just go ahead. And my opponent, they can't do anything either. So, so because Blazar also has a negate attack effect. So when your opponent, whenever opponent's monster declares attack, you negate the attack and you end the battle phase. So they literally have no way to actually out this Blazar either. So we're just gonna be staring at each other for a few turns. Cause yeah, uh, my turn, I draw a Bistio and I'm like, I kind of get impatient here. So my opponent, uh, summons Jalgen, which I will gladly negate the Jalgen. So, yeah, and then I try to enter battle phase. I, I take it. Main phase 2, I I Baylor the Fossil Dida, and then I start doing my plate. Okay, we, we special the Primera, we get a Surge, and then we summon Trudea, and then I end phase Magnum would banish the Jalgen and get another Surge, try to thin my deck out. Because eventually, if I draw into a Baylor, or if, if I draw into a Infirm, or I draw into a second Baylor, it's over. And we draw the second Veiler. So I'm going to activate stand up and I'm going to discard the, the Nibiru that's doing a whole lot, set the MF, and then Trudea back the Primera. And my opponent's turn. Now we Veiler the Fossil Dina. And now I summon back the MF. And I, I use Centurion, stand up Centurion, and we make a Chaos Angel to banish the the Fossil Dina. And they see the right on the wall. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit annoying, but. Uh, yeah, eventually you can uh, make take advantage of a Veiler on your opponent's turn. It's actually good versus stun, unlike any other deck, because you get to do your plays during your opponent's turn as well. So that's basically Centurion as a mid-range deck with a ton of hand traps. And this isn't going to be the only way I'll, I'll play Centurion, especially because uh, when we get Whitewood stuff, and we already have the the toy box in the game, so I, I'm actually think, thinking of pulling packs from this god awful pack just to maybe get some toy boxes. I don't know, but yeah, Centurion Whitewoods in the future, it's going to be a completely different playstyle from uh, the, the way I'm showing you right now. And I'm I'm gonna spoilers that's not gonna have 17 hand traps in it. Also, the with the new support. Uh, that's also going to change the deck, how the deck plays as well. And, you know, I'll, I'm excited for that when that comes into Master Duel in 2025. So, <laughs> hopefully hopefully not near the tail end, not too late in 2025. But, you know, we'll see the say of the game, uh, uh, how the say of the game is then.